As a high school student, I dreamed of becoming an architect. I even got into a top school and visited the stunning campus where a student gave me advice that would change my life forever. Don't do it. We call it architecture. <laughs> I took a different path, and for the last 12 years, I've been studying how advice can change not only careers, but also early stage startups. My research takes place in accelerator programs. Accelerator programs are boot camps for startups where founders collect a lot of advice over three to six months. I think of them as advice factories. My research with Ben Hallen and Chris Bingham shows a lot work, increasing startups' odds of survival and the amount of external funding raised. But we also saw a lot of variation between programs. I dug deeper across multiple studies to understand why. I discovered that the way advice was exchanged made a critical difference. The three critical factors were the mentors who proffered advice, the tempo of meetings, and how advice was created during those meetings. So first, mentors matter. But contrary to popular wisdom, more experienced mentors don't always give good advice. Sometimes their success and authority make their advice sound wise, but they might not have been in your shoes for a long time. And their advice might not be relevant for you. Jade was a brilliant young founder in one of our studies. She started a startup, it was a media company targeting a Gen Z audience. And her mentor was the CEO of a Fortune 500 media company. He recommended that she should build a mobile app, and she did, and it flopped. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jade and her team repeatedly changed direction based on advice from very senior mentors, and her company eventually failed. The insight? Experienced mentors don't always give good advice. This can be especially true in fast-moving industries where knowledge can quickly become outdated. Sometimes people who are just a little bit ahead of you actually have more relevant insights for your situation. When the CEO of a faith-based startup learned that he was scheduled to meet with a vice president from Playboy, he pushed back hard. <laughs> he was uncertain that meeting with a Playboy executive would yield fruitful suggestions, and he was really concerned about his reputation. But he took the meeting, and to his surprise, it turned out fantastic. It turns out that this mentor was an avid churchgoer and also a brilliant strategist. And he was also actively involved with his church's social media. And he had really, really unique and clever insights to share. And it was really helpful for the startup. So the first step when constructing great advice is to carefully pick your mentors. Experienced veteran mentors can have really good insights to share. But don't forget to also speak to people who are just a little bit ahead of you and from people who are from very different backgrounds. The second thing to consider is the tempo of meetings. Some accelerator programs instructed entrepreneurs to spread meetings with their mentors out over time. This way, entrepreneurs could decide after each meeting whether to take advice or to leave it. This was a terrible idea. When entrepreneurs only met with a couple mentors, it was really hard for them to know if the advice was any good. Other accelerator programs increased the velocity of meetings, asking entrepreneurs to meet with as many as 100 different mentors in a few short weeks. And this turned out to be brilliant. Increasing the velocity helped entrepreneurs know whether or not to take advice. It was hard to ignore good advice and easier to spot bad advice. Jeff's company built a startup 
that made a marketplace for travel excursions, things like zip lining tours and food tasting tours. Sounds fun. He tested his idea with, with travelers and they loved it. But mentors, they were not quite as enthusiastic. They were concerned that acquiring customers might be too expensive. Initially, Jeff ignored their warnings. He was so certain because his research showed that travelers loved his product. But after hearing similar advice in quick succession, he eventually admitted that he might lose money with every sale. He asked his mentors to suggest cheaper ways to reach travelers, and they recommended partnering with travel agencies who could sell his product as an add-on, and it worked. When setting up your meetings with mentors, increasing the velocity can help you judge the quality of advice. It's hard to ignore similar good advice when it's repeated over and over again. In comparison, it's easy to be seduced by bad advice when it's the only advice you receive. Last, I've been talking a lot about how to set up your meetings with your mentors and who to ask, but what should you actually say during meetings to get good advice? I studied this question with Amisha Miller and Siobhan Omani at Boston University. We thought that some mentors would give better advice than others. But after meticulously analyzing 165 interactions and conversations between entrepreneurs and their mentors, we found something different. It wasn't that some mentors gave better advice, no. It was that some entrepreneurs worked with their mentors to produce better advice. Some entrepreneurs were quite polite when mentors gave them suggestions like, have you thought about building this as a franchise model? They acknowledged with replies like, I haven't thought about it, but I really like it. Other entrepreneurs pushed back. For example, the founders of a startup that made snacks made out of fruit and vegetable pulp originally targeted moms in juice shops. Mentors cautioned that their target market was too narrow and recommended that they sell in grocery stores instead. The founders didn't see how it was viable. One of them said, we can't tell people they're eating waste. <laughs> By pushing back in the moment, the founders invited their mentors to help them coming up with a better way to talk about fruit waste. And they suggested calling it the healthiest part of the fruit. It worked. <laughs> the entrepreneurs still tested the idea, even though they liked it, and it did work. The good news, millennials and environmentalists would in fact eat these healthy fruit snacks that they bought in grocery stores. In our study, not a single founder that politely acknowledged advice later used it. Not one. Only those founders that pushed back used advice later but they didn't use advice exactly as given. They re-engaged with their mentors to clarify advice and to ask for more details. And they took a seed from the advice and they adapted it to fit their strategy better. They always tested advice and they compared the results of those tests to test with their original ideas. We cannot expect mentors to magically offer perfect, meaningful advice. We can't. The onus is on all of us to co-produce advice with our mentors, to work with them. So my advice today is to carefully curate a broad panel of mentors and then increase the velocity of your meetings so you can better judge the quality of advice you receive. And in each conversation, co-produce advice with your mentors to create advice that's customized for you. Most of all, if you're making a big decision, don't follow one person's advice like I did. If I were 18 again and one person told me that architecture school was hard, I might push back and seek more advice. And for the mentors in the room, next time somebody politely thanks you for your advice, they're not going to use it. <laughs> but if they push back, don't be insulted. You're actually getting closer 
to offering a spark of inspiration. Thank you all. Yeah.